Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this new video in the .NET Tips and Tricks in under 5 minutes series, I would like to take a deeper look into how we can clean up our method overloads. Now, it happens very often when we look in different code bases that we see classes and methods like this. We have here a static in sum that takes in an x and a y and it calculates the sum very easy. But then we have an overload to this method, which is obviously also sum, and here we take in an x and y and a z. And then we have another sum, which is another overload in which we basically take in four such parameters and then we calculate the sum on them. Now, if we go to the program.cs class, and we'll also look into a practical example later, and that's why I have created this ASP.NET Core Web API. But the main idea is that we have here this console right line, and here we want to run sum with just providing two numbers. Here we want to provide three numbers, and here four. But what if we would like to create a sum method that takes in five numbers, or even six numbers? The question is, where would we stop? Fortunately, there is a very easy way to work around this and to clean up our code base. So what we can do instead is, for instance, come here and create this new method, which is also a public static int sum. But instead of taking in an int x and an int y, we just say that we want to take in params, these keywords params, and then we want to take in an integer array. Obviously, we need now to change a little bit the logic of this method and the very naive implementation would be something like this. We iterate through all the numbers of the array and we then calculate the sum on them. Now, the cool thing about these params is that it would allow us to call this method with a variable number of arguments. And to showcase you this, I will now just delete really all the sums that we have based on integers and we'll keep just the first method. Now, if we go back to our program.cs class, and if we run this application, we see that we still get all the calculations right, even though right now we have only one single method that takes in the params of integers. Last but not least, I would also like to show you a very practical example where you can apply this in your day-to-day -day work. And therefore, we have this blocks controller. And on these blocks controllers, we have here exposed just two very simple actions. The first one would be a get block by ID, and we have the identifiers that should be in GUID format. And then we would also have another method that actually gets an article that belongs to a block by ID. And this means that what we do here is we will need also the block ID, but we'll also need the article ID. So we need two identifiers. Now, the thing is that we should validate these identifiers and we should make sure that they are valid GUIDs. And where do we usually do that? Well, we have created here this filter and this action filter is responsible to validate that the GUID is in a correct format. And if not, it should just return a bad request. Now, the thing is for this attribute is that you see that we have on one action only one GUID that we have to validate. But on the second one, we have two GUIDs. So we ended up having here two different constructors, one with one GUID and the other one with two GUIDs. And if we go back to our controller, we can see that for the first action, we actually call this validate GUID with just one argument in that constructor. And for the second one, we call this valid GUID with two arguments. So we're using the second constructor. And this is really a perfect use case for these params. So coming back to our attribute, it means that we can just simply remove these two constructors that we have here and instead replace them with only one constructor that takes in a params of string array. And this also means that we can assign this string array that we get here directly to our field so that we can process and do our action filter logic on them. However, I want to issue also a word of caution. Don't start really to use params everywhere possible. Just use params when, where it really makes sense and when you really have a lot of different overloads of some methods, they're taking the exact same type of arguments. And the only difference is the number of arguments that are passed into the method or to the constructor by that method, because the constructor in the end is also a method. So only use params when it really makes sense and it is necessary, because using params also comes with a certain performance overhead. This being said, thank you very much for watching. And until the next time, I wish you the very best.